Aloha. It's January the 26th, 2022. It's Wednesday, 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. Time for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Today's title is State of the 2022 GOP and Democratic Party. Um, you know, the, the parties have transformed. They've always transformed in the past. Uh, both parties are evolving always. Um, yet this time around, it seems like uh, one side or the other has really transformed and into something that we haven't seen or recognized for quite some time. And that's why we're here to discuss is the nature and the state of both parties. And with me today is Jay Fidel and Winston Welch. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Uh, well, Jay, we've watched the uh, GOP kind of transform over the last five years under the, the um, dictatorship of Donald Trump and it's his influence over the party. But it's worth asking the question, what are the attributes, either positive or negative, the attributes of the GOP today? Staying in power, <clears throat> increasing power. Um, <clears throat> and that means, uh, you know, self-interest, not interest for the, the country. Um, it's completely irrational. I'll tell you why. I've been thinking, we've all been thinking about this, is that, <clears throat> that, you know, for some reason, they, and including, the, especially including the base, think that if you ignore the norms, and if you ignore, you know, the American place in the world, global leadership, and if you ignore, um, you know, your neighbor, so to speak, the, the social network of the country, the social fabric mesh of the country, um, that you can get away with that, that your life continues uh, that it won't affect you. You can get up in the morning, you know, have breakfast, go to the dentist. I always focus on that. Uh, and it'll be the same. Um, and that's the craziness. Um, it's not going to be the same. And, the, and the, quest, the looming question, which we have discussed many times on this show, is what happens when they succeed. I didn't say if they succeed. That's when they succeed in destroying the democracy in destroying the social norms and ignoring a good part of the country and the people in the country, what happens? It isn't simple, but it isn't pretty. And if we, you know, draw a line, connect the dots into that, uh, what you have is a total disaster for everyone, including them. So this is irrational. It's cult. Um, it's hard to understand how people can understand one side, but not, not the other, you know, not the consequences of what they do. But that is exactly what's happened. It's cult, uh, it's power, it's following Trump and, and Trump's messaging, and it is ignoring the reality. That's what the Republican Party stands for. And it is a recipe for total disaster here, there, and everywhere. All right. You know, Jay, sometimes we get comments on our on our show after the show's over. And a lot of them are people that uh, were Trump followers or still are Trump followers. And the comments uh, range from a, a wide variety of, you know, like or dislike. But I'm going to ask you to, for one second, put yourselves in the shoes, if you can, of, of a Trump supporter and have those shoes filled with your feet respond to the comments you just made and 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 what would what would a trump supporter say to what you just said what would be their their comments hey jay you don't know what you're talking about trump was the best president the country has ever had and he may be a nasty person and he maybe has a deficient personality but he he knows the swamp he's has drained the swamp he has dealt with um, you know, the deep state in our country. There are so many problems in our country. Uh, would you rather have had Hillary Clinton? That's what he would say. And all of that is complete poppycock. But that's the bubble that the Trumpers live in. And so, you know, that's what they would say. It's not a response, but that is the response that you would hear. Well, the fact that you were able to transition so well and quickly tells me you're an attorney of training. <laughs> <laughs> Winston... Uh, Consider thank, that a tremendous insult, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, Winston, to you about the Democratic Party. Um, list a few attributes, either positive or negative, about where we are with the Democratic Party and uh, some of the, the trials and tribulations they now face. Oh, boy. The trials and tribulations they face, they're not, they're not organized. They are not, uh, don't have messaging that's, that's uh, really 
hitting to the core of what we're looking at here, which is uh, the the loss of our basic democratic institution and values. Uh, they're not. The, the, they really need a new marketing campaign, honestly, uh, to reach the hearts and minds of of the American public. For uh, for the folks that that uh, Jay so eloquently just represented. Um, that they need to reach those folks and say, okay, yes, we get that, right? We were, we, they had a good message. The Republicans were on point. They're unified. They're organized. They're lockstep behind their leader, and they don't deviate one iota. If the Democrats showed half half of that medal, then we could uh, have a, a reasonable um, some uh, policy dis discussions and and uh, and move the needle a little bit. But right now they need to focus on uh, doing on, on saving saving our nation uh, and working with those who share those values. And and uh, you know Jay talked about the base, but it, it's I think we need to um, we need to separate out and say the people that are that are uh, honest. Uh, um, principled Republicans, conservatives, we can call them, that we would have recognized six years ago, um, who who share conservative values, who uh, um, you know are part of, who, who agree that the that the process that we have in this country, while it may have its faults and, and difficulties, is still the best thing going. And the alternative is uh, very eloquently laid out by Jay on uh, almost every show that we have, uh, which is you know. Um, talk about the dentist. I'm not worried about the dentist so much as you know. Show me your papers at every street corner or building when you go in, and if you're, um, you know, you got the wrong uh, Facebook post up there, um, you know, you're, you're. Well, it, we're not there, and we don't need to go there. But I think we need to go there so that we don't go there on on some level. And I think Jay makes a much better case of it okay. than I do because uh, I'd like to remain a little bit Pollyannish. You know, you, you passed on an article, uh, I think it was either yesterday or maybe it was this morning, um, as an op-ed from Rick Scott. Now, Rick Scott, of course, is the, uh, the head of the Lincoln Project. And Rick Scott was a longtime Republican. Um, I think he still is, but not a Trumper. Um, he started to use the F word, and the F word being fascist. Uh, is that a fair characterization of the GOP in today's environment? You know, I, I don't know that labels are, are going to help anything. It, it just inflames things. I think what we can do is go back and say, hey, the process is that we go towards the middle, that this is a country of ideas rather than, um, uh, and the best idea floats to the top rather than uh, blindly following a cult leader who has a very uh, um, simple and deceptive message, uh, which, which is confusion and chaos. I think an article that also... Um, uh, hit, hit me well this morning was in the Star Advertiser in our paper. There was an article from Will Bunch from the Philadelphia Inquirer, and he talks about how things are not going very well for Donald Trump this week from the news of, of Georgia that a uh, special grand jury is being uh, convened. Uh, that you, we had the, the Washington Post talking about how. Uh, uh, Apparently, uh, Rudy Giuliani was an architect and organizer and sending false uh, forms claiming that uh, to the National Archives that that these states had elected uh, Donald Trump. Uh, we have other things that about uh, people that are being called before the, uh, the House committee um, and the Supreme Court saying you have to surrender these documents. So there's been a, a lot of... Um, uh, and then, of course, New York about with Letitia James um, and, and investigating the Trump organization. So but he says at the end of his thing, um, you know, so what he says, he's he's, you know, at, at the end of the day, is this uh, if we find out in possibility in real time that our president was a crook and then doing nothing, it, it feels like that could be the fatal blow to our American experiment. So how do we do what do we do to counter that? We. We continue uh, uh, working on better messaging to reach, uh, you know, good, decent, honest Americans who have been rightly sick of of a lot of the, the shenanigans that they see across the board. And when you have someone coming in saying, "Only I can save you. Only I can clean up this mess. I am, I am your savior." That's an appealing, simple message in a time of chaos. The Democrats don't have somebody like that, and I don't think that they're going to. Um, we need uh, Joe Biden to step up, send out his messengers, 
get better messaging. We need people on uh, principled uh, conservatives to also step up and join that messaging. And, and uh, you know, the article on, on the Lincoln Project, which you mentioned a, a second ago, uh, it's uh, an op-ed of uh, the 24th of January, what can I do seven rules for defending our democracy? And they talked about um, Stalin and and working with Stalin in World War II. They said he was the second worst person in the world, but they said the reason we worked with them was to defeat the first worst person in the world. The analogy not being persons, but rather uh, systems. And 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 so that we have to we we may not uh, approve of Liz Cheney's policies and her uh, you know her stances on certain issues, but fundamentally, fundamentally, she wants to come back and have proper debate in our um, system of government, which, uh, you know, so we we align with with the Liz Cheney's of the world who want to come back and see America still be America at the end of the day. All right. Thanks, Winston. Hey, Jay, uh, Winston just mentioned the the name of Liz Cheney. Do you foresee or do you think there's any possibility that between now and 2024, uh, a Liz Cheney type of personality or, or or persona would uh, run for president as an independent? And um, would another conservative like, yet very interested in preserving our democracy joins up with him, with her? I'm thinking of Adam Kinzinger uh, as a potential candidate. Um, what's the viability or the possibility of such an independent party? We've had them before. We've had uh, Ralph Nader and uh, all sorts of different candidates of the Ross Perot. We've had independent parties. What's to prevent one from happening now? Mm, I'm sorry, but I don't see that um, being meaningful. So she could declare as an independent. Okay, fine. Um, can she win? Mm -hmm. I think you know she, her her star has 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 gone up to the top, and it has started to float down. Um, the, the notable thing about Liz Cheney is that it's still just Liz Cheney. She's the leader of the, what do we call it, the um, enlightened Republicans. But th th it's not a movement. Sorry. It's not a whole bunch of people changing their way of doing business in the, in the Senate or the House, for that matter. They're still in lockstep, and she's still outside of that. Well, and historically, whether an independent in a world of two bubbles, whether an independent means a hill of beans in 2022, uh, the elections this year or next year, I, I have yet to see. You know, you mentioned a lot of candidates, but you didn't mention any any presidents who were independent. Well, uh, to, to go to that point is, yeah, there's no history of an independent party of winning the election, but they sure neck has prevented one from winning the other the other party that would normally draw votes. They prevented those parties from winning. Uh, Ralph Nader comes to mind as uh, preventing the 2000 election from occurring in uh, Al Gore's favor. I don't, I don't think I don't think it means that much. I, I think what means something is uh, is Winston's is thought in our discussion earlier um, for the proposition the Democratic Party has got to get its act together. That's where my heart lives. And a lot of people, a lot of people like my whole world really uh, wants to see them succeed. We want to see Joe Biden succeed, although he seems to be stumbling and bumbling. Um, you know, want to see them come together. You know, if you look back maybe 20 years and you find that the Republicans were really well organized 20 years ago and they're much better organized today. They're the party of organization, the party of lockstep, the party of you know, follow me this way, even if you don't completely agree with me. And so what's happened is the issues have conflated, thanks to social media and Fox News, and that if you follow one issue they, they put out, you wind up, you know, tagging along for all their issues, and you live in that bubble. On the Democratic side, you squabble about everything. It's a big tent, but everybody is fighting under the tent. Um, which is really regrettable in these times because that system doesn't work right now. Uh, but Joe Biden has got to be the leader of the Democratic Party, or if not him, someone else. My own view to sort of wrap around this whole discussion is uh, take it one step further is the Democratic Party has got to come up with a ticket that works and they got to do it right away. And they got to get behind that, got to agree to get behind that person and, and work that 
um, work that initiative right on through because that person can encourage uh, democratic voting uh, not only in Congress, um, but also in the elections, 2022 and 2024. Biden himself has demonstrated that his star is not rising. He's not that popular, popular even among the Democrats. He's not going to be able to win an election uh, in 2024. I really don't think so. Um, and he's, he's, uh, he's losing steam, losing mojo all the time. And this thing in Ukraine is not going to help him. This is a recipe also. Um, you know, for the embarrassment of the administration, of Tony Blinken, of Ron Klain, and the Democratic Party in general. They've got to get their act together. It's really critical. All righty. Well, you know, listening to you and Winston talk about both the GOP and the Democratic Party, I, I get a visual of um, well-disciplined ant farm versus a troop of wandering, meandering cats. Uh, but let me go back to Rick Scott's uh, point about if the GOP wins the 2022. And um, his point he makes is that uh, the Democrats will be put off balance. They'll be put on the defensive because if the House is taken by the GOP, the first thing they'll do, the first order of business is not pass legislation, but to do investigations, specifically bring back uh, Benghazi 2.0 or Hunter Biden's laptop or possibly try to uh, uh, create articles of impeachment against Joe Biden. Uh, certainly trying to validate the big lie that the 2020 election was uh, stolen from Donald Trump and a big investigation goes to that point, accusing the Democrats and uh, thereby keeping them off balance. What do you think about that, uh, uh, Rick Scott's comments in that, in that lane? Well, I think it's a delicious possibility for the uh, the GOP, and it's one of the reasons they're working so hard to stay in power and to uh, to take the House and the Senate. Can you imagine how that's going to work? It means that Biden, whose star is falling, will have he'll be completely defrocked uh, after 2022. He just won't have any any clout in the Congress at all. Secondly. Uh, aside from embarrassing him and embarrassing the Democrats to the maximum extent, um, they will they will, you know, in order to prevent any possibility of a Democratic win in 2024 or thereafter, uh, they will also have their way. I bet you five, they knock off the filibuster. Right. And uh, they'll you know, they'll control every initiative in Congress and they'll do things that you will hate. Um, you know, Winston talks about uh, having your your papers checked at every street corner. It'll be like that. It will be the empowerment of autocracy. And, and we will see, you know, the uh, emerging intersection. Of, of this country and the autocrats in, in Europe in the 30s. We will see the, the demise of civil rights. We will see the emergence of supremacy and racism. All those initiatives will become law. It's, it's, it goes beyond what the Republican states are doing now for suppression. It'll be, it'll be really awful if they take over in the House. And, and there's a likelihood they will, gentlemen. There is. Yeah. Winston, uh, the Democratic Party right now is struggling between the progressives uh, and the moderates. You know, Joe Manchin has positioned himself as a moderate de Democrat, and uh, he's the defender of uh, sane and sane spending and, and things of such nature uh, versus the progressive who came to uh, a six trillion dollar package for Build Back Better. And then it was whittled down to uh, three trillion. And then now it's whittled down to God knows what if it's whittled down to anything. Um, how does that get resolved in the Democratic Party? How does the, the progressives and their, their agenda and their wish list uh, coincide with Democrats who are more of the moderate flavor? It doesn't. The progressives continue to, uh, they, don't, they don't have anywhere to go. I mean, they're, they're already on one side. This is, the, this is their natural party, so they can try and move it. But they've seen... Uh, in reality, uh, a, a, I, I won't say complete failure of what they were uh, hoping for, but uh, Joe Biden wasn't elected to um, to bring a sea change of, of policies or, or you know, spending priorities or anything like that to America. He was he was elected because he wasn't Donald Trump. He was elected to bring some calm and unity. To what extent he's been able to do that, I don't know, but I, I can understand why he's frustrated, um, uh, certainly in, in his uh, talk that he gave and Mitch McConnell sort of 
um, you know, lambasted him for some position saying, uh, you know, Joe Biden says we're the enemy now. And blah. But I, I don't think that's what Joe Biden was saying. I think he was saying, folks, we need to wake up here and smell the coffee. And uh, so maybe what it is, is Joe Biden needs to to uh, reach out to uh Republicans uh, who are in the row, but those who are who have the R after their name, who don't want to be held um, hostage, as it were, um, and say, hey, you know what, let's uh, 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 there's room here. He's supposed to be the, uh, you know, a great um, a facilitator. Uh, there's room here for us to to create this moderate middle. Maybe he calls. I don't know what what it is. And he says, and if you are being primaried by forces against you because you actually believe in America and the values of having two, we are a two party system and you believe in that, then we will help raise money for you if you're in the moderate middle. And I guarantee you, even if it's Liz Cheney and you're a progressive uh, uh, Democrat, you will donate money to Liz Cheney and the Liz Cheneys of the world to see them reelected because they believe in the system itself. And when the system itself collapses, then all bets are off, like, like Jay was saying. Let's also... Um, look at, at, at that there is a possibility here for um, uh, Americans to change their perception of um, what has happened before as new information comes out. Now, if they're only watching Fox News, it's probably not going to happen. But let's just assume they're able to see a headline somewhere outside of their, you know, the bubble. And it's hard because we're all on an algorithm. But for vaccines, just look at, at vaccines. Um, we still have people who are rabid anti-vaxxers. And for whatever reasons those are, um, from the insane to the um, concerned, um, they, they exist and they're going to continue to exist. But if you went a year ago and you looked at polls and you asked, are you for vaccines? Will you get vaccinated? You had less than half of the people say, oh, yes, I'm definitely going to get it as soon as I can. And then you had a good third of people saying, I'm just going to wait and make sure that everyone's not dropping dead from the vaccine or, or sprouting two heads or, or, or whatever it is. That third has now become vaccinated to the point where we're about you know 75 percent of the population, not in Wyoming. Um, so Liz actually strange that she's from the one of the least vaccinated states. I think they're like 42%. But um, the point being that if people can change their minds on something as it being injected with a, a, a new, um, a relatively new um, substance that's designed to save their lives, maybe their minds can be not injected, but presented with information that will help them save their country and their very way of life and being and understand what's at stake here to the same point that they went out and got vaccinated and said, this is the right thing to do, not just for um, me, but for my nation and my neighbor as well. So I'm hopeful that in this next year, as these lawsuits come about, as the dribs and drabs come about, as more, um, more comes out that we will see we are at the precipice. We need to pull back and we need to vaccinate ourselves against so much misinformation and um, what is fundamentally um, detrimental to our society. All right. And I think Thank we can do it. Yeah, thanks, Winston. Hey, Jay, we got a question in from a viewer and I, we always appreciate that. And it adds to the flavor of our discussion. And this particular question, it's... Um, I, my screen's not quite getting it the way I want it to, so I, I'm just going to summarize it. And that is, um, is the two-party system, is it, is it tired? Is it past its benefit? Um, compare that to other countries where they have a multi-party system. And then the uh, second part of his question is, um, is it time, do we, do we expect to get popularity of a president by their, um, their status as a, as a celebrity? Donald Trump is a celebrity, yet, and he became, he became president because everyone knew who he was. Is it time for the Democrats to start looking at celebrities um, that are actually, you know, have a, have a name familiar, familiarity? Yeah, well, I think both of those are really excellent questions and suggest answers. 
Um, maybe it's more, uh, Tim, than going with Liz Cheney and an, an independent party. Maybe it's encouraging lots of parties and requiring, um, you know, a, a consolidation and alliance, a combination of alliances in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the Congress. Um, maybe we should follow the European system. Um, it's, a big, it's a big umbrella and somehow it works. Somehow, sometimes it doesn't work, though. Uh, in any event, what's happening right now is simply not working. Um, and and what you what what this questioner is suggesting is really appealing in the sense that you don't have to have um, a constitutional amendment. You don't have to throw out the you know the baby in the bath. You can just sort of agree, including the Democrats, the rightly the right thinking Democrats, and maybe some Republicans. Let's have a bunch of parties here, um, and let's try to you know consolidate. Well, that um, might be. That might be his point is that, you know, we have the Green Party, we have, you know, we have the, you know, the independent parties, but they're just never a candidate that's popular enough for name recognition and people to uh, rally around. Um, yeah, I want to I want to go to that. I think the yeah. American culture has elevated certain people to celebrity status. I mean, we live in a world of Hollywood. We live in a, in a world of familiarity with, um, you know, celebrity faces, names, even their histories. And if you if you look at, um, you know, the public media, you see so much time is spent um, not only not only with uh, celebrities in Hollywood, but celebrities in, in the sports world as well who are completely unqualified to serve politically. Let me say that again, completely unqualified. And the same, frankly, um, with the celebrities out of Hollywood. They don't know anything about running a country. They don't know anything about participating in a, in a, in a legislature. Uh, and yet uh, we treat them as uh, worthy and qualified. Shouldn't do that. But, but here's the thing. That's the reality. We've been doing that for a long time. And so if the Democrats or the Green Party or the independents or anybody wants to get in on the fray, they have to find name recognition. They have to find celebrity. But, they, you know, you can have a celebrity who is a little more qualified rather than less qualified. Uh, and the point is you get behind him and you, you, you pump that sucker. You do public relations and publicity. You make him look good or her. Um, and I think at the end of the day, although it's it's not a perfect system, it's not what the founders would have contemplated. At least uh, maybe there's a chance with that kind of uh, diversity, if you will, uh, we can catch the middle and we can catch all those kids that were following Bernie Sanders around. Where are they now? They're the real constituency. They're the future. They must be so discouraged they can't breathe and they have no clout. And they worry about their vote not being counted. Um, and, you know, people in the African-American community, they must wonder the same thing in general. And so what I worry about is if they are so discouraged and so frustrated, we've talked about that, um, that they don't care about voting anymore. A, they won't vote. And B, they'll express themselves in other ways. And we won't like it because it'll be in the street. And then we'll have what one commentator wrote this week. We'll have the Civil War. Uh, and civil wars can be different than they were in 1861, but they can nevertheless be very destructive. And I think we're, you know, we're cruising for that. So uh, all in all, the press seems to be, Winston, you know, the articles that you send us around, the, the links and all that, and the ones that I look at, too, uh, suggest that it's falling apart. You know, the David Brooks approach um, and even um, uh, Newt, Newt, Grin, Newt uh, Gingrich and the, com the uh, Lincoln Project commentary on him. I mean, more and more of that kind of rhetoric is coming into play. And, you know, I start to believe it. I do believe it, uh, that we're falling, we're falling apart. So many bad things are happening. And query, you know, how are we going to deal with the next generation? How are we going to get them involved again? Um, and, and really, at the end of it, it's, it's, a, it's maybe a, a reorganization of political parties. That's the subject of our show, Tim, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, Jay, uh, we've run out of time, but I'm going to do a quick wrap up. Uh, Winston, your final comments, please. Uh, well, Jay brings up a good thing that maybe some part of the old order is falling apart. So what's coming next and how can we shape it? How do we how do we shape it? Do we maybe we we could do something like a not entirely European uh, thing, maybe something a little bit more like our neighbor to the north. You know, they've got uh, about five parties that they work with uh, the block 
Quebecois and the, you know, the new independents, whatever they are, the conservatives and the liberals um, and the, uh, uh, you know, the greens. So they have a little stake in there. They're able to cobble things together. But again, that presupposes that they all have a vested interest in having the system itself work and that they're competing for the best ideas among the hearts and minds of the people, not just to destroy when they once they get into power. So uh, we're dealing with some uh, fundamentally different ideas here. I'm hoping that over the course of the year that our good and uh, great country wakes up. It does smell the coffee. It realizes the uh, the grievous um, uh, danger that we're in right now and that we can do something about it. We can do something about it and uh, we must do something about it because the alternative is simply untenable. It's it's uh, horrible to think about and we need to focus on solutions now as best as we can. And uh, so I'll just leave it with that, uh, whether personal, uh, statewide, civically, nationally, uh, we need to focus on the solutions from here on out because we're very good at where the problems are. All right, Winston. Well, you leave it well. Thank you. Jay, you get the final word. Hey, what I get out of this conversation is the word share because the parties have, have somehow drifted to places where they don't share power. Trump is a perfect expression of that. Um, you just you, you, you denigrate the other side, they denigrate you, uh, two separate bubbles, two separate camps, you can't share powers, and you can't run a democracy that way. You know, you tell a two year old, look, share, share your toys, share your stuff, share your space. And, and the country has forgotten to do that. And I'm not saying that the Republicans are right about this. I, I believe they're wrong. But the, but the, the total view of it is, we're not sharing. And so we have to learn within the political system to share. And we should modify the political system without a constitutional amendment. Uh, and of course, we have to teach people about the value of sharing to share power, such as this questioner who suggested we look at the European system of multiple parties. And maybe that's an answer. Sim simple, basic norm about sharing. All right. Well stated as, as Winston, well stated. Thank you so much. Uh, we've run out of time. Please join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we hope to see you then. Aloha.